Wisdom, the final frontier to true knowledge. Welcome to Wisdom Trek, where our mission is to create a legacy of wisdom, to seek out discernment and insights, to boldly grow where few have chosen to grow before. Hello, my friend. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your captain on our journey to increase wisdom and create a living legacy. Thank you for joining us today as we explore wisdom on our second millennium of podcast. This is day 1081 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. Creating a biblical worldview is important in order to have a proper perspective on today's current events. To establish a biblical worldview, it is required that we also have a proper understanding of God's Word. Especially in our Western cultures, we do not fully understand the scriptures from the mindset and the culture of the authors. In order to help us all have a better understanding of some of the more obscure passages in God's Word, we are investing Wisdom Wednesdays reviewing a series of essays from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. He has compiled these essays into a book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible. There are times when we are dealing with our children or those that are very close to us where we have to show love in a firm and disciplined manner called tough love. This is required because it is best for those whom we do love. In today's essay, we will explore a passage that covers God's tough love. It is a common myth that God will always bring us back to repentance. This myth is debunked in the first letter of John, while John writes in 1 John chapter 1 9. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. We need to consider, though, that John also tells us that sometimes God never gives us another chance to confess our sins and be forgiven. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 16 and 17, the apostle gives us the other side of the sin confession forgiveness coin. If you see a fellow believer sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray, and God will give that person life. But there is a sin that leads to death. But I am not saying that you should pray for those who commit it. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. Put simply, there are sins that Christians commit that don't lead to death, but there are some that do. Is John talking about the divine law of cause and effect, where a specific sin irrevocably results in death? Well, not exactly. We can be certain that John had no specific sin in mind, because he never names the sin in this passage. John is saying there may come a time where God has had enough of our sin, and then our time on earth will be done. We cannot know when such a time might come, so we shouldn't be in the habit of sinning with impunity. John had actually seen this happen. In John chapter 5, verses 1-11, through 11, Luke relates an incident of Ananias and Sapphira, who lied to Peter and to God about the proceeds from a piece of property that they had sold. They were under no obligation to give any of it to the work of the church, but pretended that they had given all the money to the Lord's work. When confronted by Peter, both of them collapsed and died on the spot. Luke writes in Acts chapter 5, verse 11, Great fear gripped the entire church and everyone who heard what had happened. No kidding, this would have a great impact on the church. No doubt this incident also left a imprint on John's mind. But John would have also known that there was an Old Testament precedent for sin unto death as well. In Numbers chapter 11, in response to the latest wave of complaining about their circumstances, the Lord sent the people of Israel meat to eat in the form of quails. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 33, we are told, But while they were gorging themselves on the meat, while it was still in their mouths, the anger of the Lord blazed against the people, and he struck them down with a severe plague. John's message to the believers wasn't, God doesn't judge like that today. Rather, it was, stop sinning, because there is a sin that leads to death. Lest we think that God is horrible and negative, we would do well to remember that it was also John who penned 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. As with Ananias and Sapphira, removing the sinning believer from the church was very tough love but the fledging church was all the stronger and more committed because of it. And that will conclude our essay for today. Next Wisdom Wednesday, we will continue with the New Testament as we look at Dr. Heiser's next essay titled, Jesus is God, the Name. 
I believe that you'll find this another interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute humor nugget that will provide you with a bit of cheer and will help you to lighten up and live a rich and satisfying life. So encourage your friends and family to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past 1,080 treks or read the Wisdom Journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. And I encourage you to subscribe to Wisdom Trek on your favorite podcast player so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward. Enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.